<laughs> You're not going to like it, but we're back with another episode of the Bar Down Podcast. Today we talk about Patrick Kane going back to Chicago and showing exactly why they didn't bring him back. He'd screw up their tank job. The Rangers, they continue to trend one way, while the Devils, we're not quite sure which way they're going. We weigh in on two streaks, the Leafs winning and Matt Rempe fighting. And finally, we do our very first mailbag. Welcome in. Why aren't they going to like it? Who? I don't know. You started off the whole thing by saying, you're not going to like it, but we're back with another. And then I just assume, you know, it was a, a nice little self-deprecation. It was a joke. I mean, I'm sure it's also honesty for some people. There's some people who hate click this, but I was a joke, more or less. Damn. I got it. Do you guys win the li- uh. re- like when the refs have fun like that? I love that. I know people don't for some reason. <laughs> Didn't feel exclusively. Actually, I said people. I meant person. You're right. I meant person. <laughs> yeah. All good. Yeah. Like a little fun. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you like that? You guys know what we're talking about. By the yeah, way. yeah, the ref saying yeah, yeah. you're not gonna like this. Okay. Now it's a good call. Corbin was giving me that look like he, he had didn't no know. idea. What no, I, was I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was he like the, 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 the he, you're not gonna like this, but it's no yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then Tim Peel, not a fan of that. Where the league's not gonna like that either. It's Where like, West McCauley you made a name off to. I know. Yeah, I don't think he likes that. Five minutes okay. for fighting. You know. Those guys, five each for fighting. I do you remember like right. at the World Juniors they had that thing like the beginning of the game that was like. People loved, <laughs> no, no, they no, no. loved it for like a week, and then everybody got so mad. About Which it. is this? Are, are you talking about when they're like, um, "Let's have fun" or something? Like, yeah, they give they like a little coming up with like no, they but they'd come up with like little like catchphrases and stuff like that, and there was like, and then people got really sick of it really quick. But then now, now that they like, they kind of went back to basics, and they just say something like. Let's have a good game, fellas. And they drop it, and people like that. What did they say to Bedard before his first game? Do you remember? Oh, that I, was hilarious. It was really the awkward. The opening game of this year. I think he was, was like, Connor, so awkward. welcome to the NHL. Let's drop the puck. And he was like, thanks, man. <laughs> welcome to the NHL, man. Okay, guys, it's showtime. Let's have a great game. Like, and then he just <laughs> trying to win a Then he got bodied yeah. 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 by Crosby. Yeah, man. So yeah, He was like, I'm really focused in, dude. Like, I can't do this right now. Uh, but anyways, we're in Chicago, so let's stay there. Patrick Kane comes back. It's supposed to be Chris Chelios' night. Was still his night. That was fun. Good festivities. But showtime. He does what everyone didn't really realize he'd come back and do. Because we even spent, I don't know how much time being like, man, Ed Jovanovsky had the same <laughs> resurfacing thing. And he never came back. I had a pretty good. I said forty five points for him in the Did season, you? and we're Did getting you? pretty close. Hey, we're to that. getting close to that. Yeah. My my yeah. main question to you guys at that though is, how many teams do you think should now be disappointed that they didn't make more of an effort to get him, or is this just like he landed in the perfect situation where he gets to now play with DeBrinket again, and it's just a good scenario for him? I don't think it's necessarily like perfect situation. Like we're talking about Patrick Kane, like a easy slam dunk Hall of Famer over here, and he's averaging a point per game. He never really tailed off too much, in my opinion. I know last year in, in New York wasn't the greatest showing, but like it's still an elite, elite generational talent we're talking about. So if you're if you're asking me how many teams I think are regretting not getting this guy, there's probably about 18 teams that are either going to be playing in the playoffs or pushing to make the playoffs that I think would love to have a player of his caliber on their team. And like obviously he wouldn't have gone to 18 different For sure. teams. Yeah. But that being said, there were only what? Four, five teams, it seemed that like concretely interested, and maybe that does come from actually approaching the guy. But w- what do you guys think? I, who are the teams that were kind of in the mix on Patrick Kane? I want to say that again, I, maybe it's just because we're was in it Toronto. The Devil? Is that what you're going to say? The Devils, I think, was one, but no, the one I was thinking of Buffalo was the yeah. obvious one, right. which good on you for not doing that <laughs> in the end. Yeah. You picked the right scenario between the two of those. Uh, I wanted to say the Rangers good and the on Leafs. You for, to Patrick Kane or good on you to Buffalo? Oh, come on. Patrick Kane. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. No, the Sabres fans would have taken that. With the Leafs at some point, like I know it was yes. very. I think it was. I don't know if it was for the, when he was a free agent. I think at the deadline the last deadline, year, that yeah. was a talk because I think oh. he had them on his list of like I would go there. With, like, were the Rangers part. back on the list, or could they have just not afforded him? Because I mean, they're looking for wingers now, and that's kind of strange. That I don't remember hearing them in there, but either way, I think they were part of the discussion. I mean, we could probably just look. This yeah, up. I have access to the internet. <laughs> I know it sounds dramatic, but the more we talk about it, the more it feels like he just landed exactly where he was supposed to be. Yeah, I agree. I, I kind of landed more on the second point. They're like, yeah, it seems like he's just in a good spot. Like he to gets it. Like because like on some of these other teams, he's probably not getting as much power play time. Like it's yeah, to bring it, it's having some familiarity there. It's. I I don't know. I, I just think he's in a good spot. I yeah. I uh, There was like a quote from Lalon where he was saying that Kane was upset that he wasn't getting to play in like overtime and whatever, and he still played him there. But that also speaks, as you said, to the situation where 
There are many other teams he could have gone to, and that wouldn't even have been a discussion where a coach would have joked about that. He'd be like, yeah, man, like I didn't bring you in for this. So you're right. Yeah, he's well, just getting and for the Leafs, like, good on his time. If we, if we want to specifically talk about the Leafs, I just mean like how would they carry four goalies if they had Patrick Kane? <laughs> what are you on? Yeah. Um, one of the other points that kind of came out of that whole game was a fun discussion on just wanting to see the Red Wings in the playoffs. Mm. I think we dunk on them enough as far as being legit or not legit because clearly analytics-wise, they're not darlings there. Most people mm-hmm. expect them to not make the playoffs, or if they do, it's probably a little bit more lucky. You but still want to see them in there, I mean, right? I, they have – yeah, I, I think so. Well, I don't know. I would still – I'd prefer the Penguins over them because I just – I would do. Like – I like their players more, but the the one thing, like, they do have pretty sick special teams, and, like, that's, like, I like Patrick Kane's going to help that a lot, and, like, yeah. as much as, like, all the analytics stuff for their five-on-five five play is bad, yeah, they're, hey, Patrick Kane, giving, yeah. you, giving you some points when it matters. Yeah. Do you guys remember right when he signed there, and the conversation was like, and if they don't make the playoffs, he's open to being traded again? Guys just moving. So again, yeah, that might be interesting. Except they're in a spot they're where so they close, wouldn't. Yeah, they right. wouldn't get rid of him. No, you're right. Yeah, I know. That's now that I think it from a neutral perspective, that kind of sucks. Yeah, <laughs> because you can't be even traded. They're not that. out. They're not all the way in. It's kind of a tough spot for him. But if you're Stevie Y, maybe that's the best leverage point you can get. Where you're like, we don't really want to give him up, but if you're really gonna give us a lie, we'll <laughs> yeah. do it. Not a lie on that one. Not a lie. Was Cindy Crawford more of a star than both Chelios and Patrick Kane? Yeah. In that the, the, the <laughs> clip of it, I saw it on their YouTube page, and it was like it didn't like blow up, but it had way more views than anything from that night. And I was like. Who is on this page? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> who is like, oh, I'm just like slamming the button to see her. Like, what was she doing? She was shooting or right yeah, like from center those, ice. Yeah, where there's like the little holes in the bottom of the thing. Like, yeah. That's hard. Yeah. Yes. And like, it looks like she had a pretty good shot. Like, yeah. I was like, did Cindy Crawford play hockey? I don't, I don't I'm know. I'm a Chicago girl. Maybe she spent some time on the ice, but I was highly impressed by that. And also, that whole ovation, I definitely shed a tear. You guys are looking at me like I'm crazy for that. Yes. But I love shedding <laughs> hockey tears. Like, nothing gets me in my feels like hockey. <laughs> it was kind of cool. And it is still funny that he scored the winner <laughs> and that they genuinely just cheered because then you're so bad. <laughs> yeah. That they're just like, yeah, we'll do that. Huge faux pas. Maybe. Sorry, I told the reason I looked at you weird because I was like, oh, did they give Cindy Crawford a standing ovation? <laughs> <laughs> they would have. No, the Patrick came one. Yeah, yeah, they would have no, done I guess that. That, that was definitely pretty emotional. But the. The other thing is like, what do you guys think of? I was, I feel like you're about to ask what I was about to ask. Him skating at the Shoving crowds, going showtime, 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 showtime. It clearly meant a lot to him. I, but like the thing I was gonna say, and Julie, I guess you're the one who's the, you're not a huge soccer fan, but as much, right? Maybe yes, whatever. You, no, I'm anti soccer. So in soccer, <laughs> I, that, okay, I'm glad you said it. and I didn't then. But in soccer, I think she's when you go, I'm not joking. No, I don't oh, really? think she is. That's why I'm there. I like but, Ted Lasso though. If, there you go. Uh, in soccer, if you go back to your old team, it's like you go, you do one of these. When you score, you do one of these. You're almost ashamed at what you've done. I'm so sorry. You're just like, hey, I'm not cheering this. I won't do it. Declan Rice just did it. Yeah. This dude was, as you said, scores the OT winner. And like, like I respect shook it. off his teammate first but, to do it. But I think it has more to do. Like, if Chicago wasn't so terrible, if the game didn't mean kind of nothing to Chicago, yeah. it would probably be different. I kind of helped them out. I think yeah. in hockey, you just do it, though, anyways. And I don't know what Dabrinkit's relationship is now with the fans there, but, like, he scored just in the first or the second, and he was going off, too. And I think in hockey, and let me make this clear, I don't care. I think it's cool, whatever. It's weird in soccer when they just, like, very weird, think that they're not allowed to be happy for something. But is that not hilarious? Like, what a stark difference that is. <laughs> the thing I thought the, that I was more commenting on was that he was yelling his own nickname. Oh, yeah, and you can see it. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. going, showtime, showtime. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? If you have that much, like, time on an operating table and come back and have that moment, I'm sure even for him, who's, like, accomplished yeah, it enough, sure. it probably did feel pretty good. But it was uh, very, they don't make the playoffs, it hilarious. It was an extremely cool moment regardless. And, yeah. like, has anyone ever had more time on a breakaway? <laughs> no. <laughs> he, and then after the game, it was so weird. He was like, yeah, I knew if I had a breakaway, I was going to do that move. I've never heard a player say that they Shoot had a move in yeah, it wasn't if even they a, had it was a breakaway. Like, yeah. He just ripped it. Isn't he, he just yeah, kind of it was like a quick flip. It. No, didn't he just, he kind of just took it in and he, he just went he up. He stick handled a bunch and then ripped it. And then he yelled yeah. showtime yeah. really loud. <laughs> that's yeah. what he thought about. Showtime. That's what he showtime. meant. Yeah. Yeah. I knew what I was going to yell once <laughs> I was done. Uh, they should have done the heartbreaker. Wow. Yeah. That's his thing. Because then he's breaking their hearts too. Yeah, yeah, that would have been, yeah, sorry. That would have been way cooler. Uh, anyways, <laughs> cool. I don't know what I'm... the Rangers, uh, they were on a 10 game win streak. It got snapped by the 
Blue Jackets of all teams, but that's all right. That's how that works sometimes. We already know what the Rangers are. Such strays there. What, for the Blue Jackets? <laughs> yeah. I think that's appropriate that's stray. So valid. Yeah. Yeah. It's not I don't think that's stray. out of pocket. That's an observation. It. <laughs> fair, fair. Either way, we know what the Rangers are at this point, so I'm not going to have you guys debate. And we know what the Blue Jackets are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we that's went a stray. Over that. <laughs> that is a stray. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I won't have you guys debate any of that. Like, clearly, again, they're a team that probably will do well just based on the fact that they have most pieces, except for maybe a center, maybe give an extra winger and some defense. But either way, it had me thinking, because they've played so many good Metro Division matchups, and that's naturally what's going to happen in the playoffs. Who's a team that you'd want to see them play against? Like, And it actually is possible for that first-round matchup. Because they did have one of the most entertaining first-round matchups last year with the Devils. Even though that one, that seems a little... Less likely, potentially. Yeah. Rangers Red Wings would be sick. Listen, I know you were just talking about everyone dumping on the Red Wings. I don't think I'm excited for anyone that the Red Wings play in the playoffs. <laughs> so I, I, more, I want you guys to be excited about the Rangers here, by the way. Just to, no, no, I'm just, just saying. Like, I, feel like, I feel like if, if the Rangers were playing the Red Wings in the first round, I would be very, very surprised if the Red Wings won that series. No, I agree with that. Like, it's not. I'm not necessarily saying it from like a hockey point of view. It's more that like those are two massive fan bases, original six teams that like I think they would get really fired up for it. And like Detroit, I was pretty rude about Detroit. I think in our last podcast, Ooh, still like, are. I just well, no, I wasn't that rude. I was just kind of like, I don't know. I, people were commenting like, "Oh, that's the same as the Leafs," and I was like, "No," but I said I think the Leafs' top end talent is better. But like the Red Wings. I don't like. They're still solid. Like they could win a game or two. I don't like. And I, I don't want to be too dismissive of them, but like they're definitely gonna be. If I was looking at the Eastern Conference and I wanted to play any team, so. okay. So let's go back to the Rangers here for a second because we're done being rude <laughs> to the Red Wings. Who would you want to see them play? Then it actually be fun to watch. I should say then versus like the fan base part. Are you, well, but aren't we being realistic? Do you mean like you mean realistic? Because there's more than one. I think they could play Tampa. I think I think it's not a stretch that if they play the Lightning, and I think that would be a really really cool series to watch, especially the way Tampa's been this year, where it's like they're letting the puck in the net a lot, but then also Kucherov's just scoring at an insane rate, and there is history with those two teams in the playoffs as well. I think Tampa would be like a pretty good matchup for the Rangers, and again, just because of the pedigree that the Lightning have, I feel like it could go either way. Yeah, and it's probably not going to happen, but it could technically because the Canes are playing super well. Technically speaking, that could also flip and they could be in the second position. So if that opens it up for you, you can feel free to take that. Like, would you guys want to see a Flyers series from what you saw on the weekend? Flyers are cool. I like them. They're like, I don't know, they just fight and they're... They're uh, gritty. Yeah, I love They're them. torts. Yeah, and then you get you get. Whoa! The new... I didn't actually mean gritty like their mascot. I meant that they're just a gritty team. That was the marketing I, yeah. meeting that, that they had. They're crazy. just like, what are we? We're gritty. You just make that the name. Yeah, that's the coolest thing about Philly, I think, because so many teams in the NHL kind of lack identity, mm. and they they really have one. So that's nice for them. I you mean like organizational series. wide? Like that's just what we do. Yeah. yeah. I, was anyone else kind of bummed they didn't name Travis Konechny the captain? A little bit. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I don't know. I felt like I and Sean and McCurry he is embodies amazing. that kind of whole team exactly. And, and like, even like, did you see the clip of him with Brendan Smith where he's like, how, how many? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, man, I love him. He's such a fun, player. but so I, I do think like, but that has nothing to do with the Rangers, really. I just think like the anybody the Flyers play, like, I'll be interested in that. You didn't think you were gonna say that at the start of the year, did you? No. No, no. We we picked Barely them and them. San Jose as the worst. Locks to be the worst. Yeah. Uh, well, part of that, as we had highlighted, why that would be such an interesting series was because Rempe he went and what was it Deloria? Is that who he fought on the? Yeah. That was yeah. one of the craziest Flyers. fights I've ever seen. It was everywhere too. Like got I, fed I, people, a bit. <laughs> got, yeah, they a both bit. got fed a bit. A lot. Like, yeah. I feel like I live like Rempe kind of like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did you see Deloria's face? Even like the next yeah. day or that two days later, they're playing even. Pittsburgh. And I, he was just all like, still, like covered up there. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Maybe, maybe just like being big. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say though, like it got a huge amount of attention. The amount of like friends I have who don't watch hockey, they're like, "You see this like fight or whatever that?" I was just like, "Oh my yeah. god!" It's one of those. I, I say unfortunate because there is like a double side to it. It's like yeah. one of the things that makes hockey so unique. But obviously, as people have discussed, because this guy's come in. His hallmark so far has literally just been fighting. He has more penalty minutes than he has, like, time on ice. Yeah, he fights immediately. Immediately. He did that, like, in his debut in the the stadium series game. 
Uh, obviously, I'm sure you guys have seen, there's all these discussions around that uh, where, yes, fighting is entertaining, and there's the old school part that you're like, cool, this is fun to watch. But there's also a very clear path to players who have that kind of career where it's not a great outlook for them. What what do you guys even think about any of that as far as, do you think he's like kind of going a little heavy to start things? I mean, yeah, like I guess, but like I, I don't know. I still enjoy it. I don't know. <laughs> I just like I don't know. Maybe that's just the hockey fan. That's like a no. There's no wrong answer. Yeah. I know. I'm kind of a brickhead. Like I don't want to see him get hurt or anything like that. It's got to slow down at some point, right? Yeah. This is a which, crazy break will. into the league. So I thought the Delorier fight was really even. He obviously got fed a little bit by Matt Olivier. Right? Yeah. In the most yes. Oh, maybe that's the one I was Yeah, I think that's what you're thinking of. Because yeah. the Deloria one was really even. And yes, I always think right. of Deloria as maybe the toughest guy in the NHL. Yeah. That people will actually still fight. Because Ryan Reeves is really tough, but nobody is even tough enough to fight him now. So yeah. it's kind of a useless weapon. Did you watch that? Du- like, again, the Ducks game was the weirdest thing. He was on the ice to end it. And, and so was like Radko Gudis. Yes. And I was like, why are both of you on the ice right yeah. now right. to end this if that's not happening? Right. Well, the weirdest part was Gudis not being there. It made sense for Reeves too. Because it's like... Yeah. No, up, no, they were, were both... Up. Yeah. I know, but like he was there up... What was it? Nine eight two? two, nine yes. two yeah. at that yeah, point. Yeah. And like, yeah, so they're like, we're not, we'll just put our, sure. our goon out right. and whatever. Yeah. Sorry. Weird, you, yeah. weird to put Gudis out again and not do anything. Yeah. 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 But Matt Olivier kind of fed him. That yeah. was the first fight yeah. yeah. he, he's been hearing. fed in. So I, I think maybe it'll be like, I don't think every single tough guy in the league is going to grab him from here on out every game now. Maybe No, you like hope that. not. But at the same time, he's already because He's got to be able to say no out. every once in a while. For sure. It's, I think it's going to be up to him because I do think that like, if now, if you're, like a tough guy in the league, it's probably been so rare that you've been like, oh, I can just like go get a guaranteed fight. Like yeah. anytime I go out and like whatever, like I'm sure they're all gonna try. So can I now. ask you guys something? Is he good at hockey? Because I have not looked at his stats. <laughs> I haven't looked at anything else about he, him. He's an AHL level player who most likely like what he's offering now is pretty much what you're probably gonna get right. from everything I've it's read, interesting, seen, watched. It's interesting because this is kind of like, almost this is really similar to Arbor Jack guy for me because no. he was undrafted in the out. He was, I'm not, you He's know, I'm a big Arbor tit. Jack guy fan. I love him. Okay, good. Undrafted in the O, undrafted in the NHL player. And when I covered him when he played in the OHL, I, he wasn't a very good skater. Like, I would I would have never picked Arbor Jack guy to be in the NHL. But then he got invited to Habs camp that COVID year kind of carved out a spot for himself, and now all of a sudden he's an NHL player, when I thought his max was always going to be AHL. So maybe there is value in these guys. It's so rare that guys are willing to play In a like playoff that. series, like, for sure, as we said, because, I mean, if they do end up playing someone like the Flyers or whatnot, like, there's a reason that these guys do that as much as it does feel outdated. Yeah. Like, it, it still does have an effect. It's almost come back into style, like yeah. bell-bottom jeans. <laughs> exactly like bell-bottom jeans. <laughs> yes. That's how I act, <laughs> yes. Uh, which ones do you like? Flare pants or? I think like if we could get like bell bottom Cooperalls, that would be kind of cool. Sick. What do bell bottoms look like? I actually don't know. Like I assume a bell, but I'm now when I said flare pants, I'm like that's what I think bell bottom. That's more like, like yoga wide. pants flared. <laughs> Is it? Now I'm lost. <laughs> now I'm... bell bottom's got to be aggressive, right? It's got to start at the knee. Yeah. Yeah. That makes uh, sense. Speaking of uh, players that were asking, what is it that you do around here? Slaff. You're, you're here. There's not many moments wow. we get to talk about the Habs. That was a crazy way to bring him up when he's doing so well. Well, I mean that is like, originally, that is how we would talk about him. We're is like, that what I said? What what's do you going do? on? Remember, yeah, what is it you do here? Literally, you made that joke, I think, the last time you we were on here, where you were like, man, what was it? His interview was good? I don't even remember what you were calling I, I, I had told you, I'm like, yeah, he's like, I really like the guy. He does great post-game interviews. And then you're like, <laughs> yeah, that's what they drafted him for, post-game interviews. And that was just like, became the running joke. He broke out the French in one? Uh, yeah, that was awesome. He, he's he's gaining some confidence. He's a young kid. He's settling into a big city, a big market. I think the last time that I was on a podcast is when we did the redrafts. Yes. And again, and we're talking about Slavkovsky. Yes. Your eyes, Slavkovsky. Abundantly clear. One of the best young players in the NHL. That is abundantly clear now at this point. So he's going to go ahead and say that, and you guys are fine with that, right? Because he is. Right? Yeah, I think he's yeah. been great. Like, I don't think you can really knock it. What's He's, he's like almost... He's, he's got like 30 points now? Yep, yep. 12 goals. I think he's, yeah, a little above that. Um, but he's, he's doing well. And the last time I was on when we did the redraft, like... 
actually someone DM'd me recently saying like, would you still not take Slavkovsky at one? And I was kind of like, you know what? I, now I feel bad. I feel like I was a coward for not taking him at one <laughs> in the redraft. But got to defend your boy, man. You do. And the interesting part with him is like, obviously the start of the season, back when we were making the jokes about how he's a post-game interview type player, <laughs> it was rough watching him. I'm not going to lie. I think I said that. He just looked a little bit out of place in the NHL. and It's amazing it, how much confidence can do that. Exactly. Yeah. And then around maybe the 20 game mark, he hit this point where there were no numbers to back up his play. But every time he was on the ice, you felt his presence. And he was, and I know it's like if you're praising a first overall pick because he's a good four checker or because he's making good things happen on the ice, but there's zero end product to back it up, again, that's still not what you want to see from a first overall pick. Big aura guy. Yeah. <laughs> But it was a step in the right direction, and then finally he's starting to be rewarded with goals, assists. He's playing on that top line. Power play, he's on there for like a minute and 40 seconds. Well, even um, in the last podcast, we were talking about the, the discussion when I brought him up was basically – because we were trying to we were trying to basically pick players over another player. It was, a bi- it was the byfield discussion. Yeah, yeah. so because I initially said, like, would you take him over – my, my head when I was trying to come up with one, I was like, would you take him over Lafreniere? And I think at this point, like – most people would just because of where Lafreniere is in his right. development. Like he's been in. The he's had a better longer. year too. Yeah. He has. So had a better I saw year. a crazy stat and, today. And I think Johnny Lazarus tweeted that in every game that Lafreniere scored this year, he has like maybe eighteen goals or something like yeah. that. A couple multi-goal games. So I think sixteen games. They've won all of them. Yeah. It's kind of so. Weird. It's just like yeah. get some that's depth scoring. That's kind of one of those stats that I don't know, I know if they mean anything, but I'm, I'm, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or is he just padding stats when they're up six one on the? Top? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that. <laughs> I don't. I, I didn't even mean it as a shot at Lafreniere. I more just meant that, like, like again. I think it was a discussion when they were first drafting him. That was like, oh, would you? Because people were kind of thinking maybe you buy low on Lafreniere. Would you yeah. trade that pick? All these things, and then, and then. But I thought I think Byfield's stock is probably even a little bit higher than his right now. Yeah. And I think like if you look at their numbers, like. It's weird because I actually I love how Byfield's played this year, but still like numbers wise, like Slavkovsky is trending very well right now. So. Out, out of curiosity on the laugh front from the two Leafs fans here, I'm curious because obviously I think your most popular tweet still the lottery yeah, ball yeah, thing. Yeah. Do you actually think his career would have like panned out that differently if he had gone to the Leafs? Because I mean he would have been a useful player for you guys, but do you think he would just got shipped already? It was Potentially, almost, it was a pretty similar spot though. It was yeah. the Rangers. Though, what right? if he had gone had to too like, many good players? Yeah. What if in in any normal year he goes to the worst team in the NHL, barring mm-hmm. like a crazy thing happening in the lottery? When he gets that power play time that we kept yeah. saying, like, hey, that's what I wonder. Pretty about tough him. for him to get any points if they're not even going to use him in a spot where like a yeah. traditionally a young talented player would get some minutes. Even he also went at the peak of COVID, and I, I have some empathy empathy for those COVID players. They lost a little development time. Yeah, it was a hard draft year for scouts and stuff. So. I I don't know. It's, it's but but on the Leafs, if you had gone there, what do you think would have happened at this point? The only still thing on the team, still in, the t- in terms of like being traded or not? Yeah, yeah I think so. I think it's like, it's not like he's a big contract or anything. And then the, the only thing I would say is that the Leafs, you can have you can point to a lot of things that they've done wrong over the years, but like their recent uh, track record for player development is like very good. Yeah, and you can look at so many players that came up through the Marlies and that they've kind of let go and maybe. When I say their player development was very good, maybe their recognition of giving some of those guys a shot hasn't been very good because, like, you can look around the league and just see all these guys that, like, used to be on Marley's or in the league. Trevor Moore. Yeah, Trevor Moore. Connor Brown. Marchman. Carter Verhage. um, Zach Hyman, though, on that team, like, is, is another one. I know people, like, Love giving the least for that, but but if we're just going purely hypothetical, maybe I don't know. I'm sure it would have been fine. But for the listeners and viewers, I sense you're disgusted. I somehow turned this into a Leafs thing because they didn't do it. And that was me. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the Metro and talk about the Devils. Uh, they played the Rangers last week and got absolutely slapped. And they still have pretty similar problems where they clearly they've missed Dougie Hamilton and clearly they still need a goalie, but. Do you think this situation for them is going to get any better and it really is just like get people back, get a little bit of solid goaltending? Or do you think without a major move, I'm just out on this team this year? This guy's shuffling through his notes. And is, he it, knows. is, this major, notes the is a major move like, do the Devils get a goalie? They and have that's to it. get a goalie? Yeah. I guess so. I don't know. It's rough because like I don't, as much as like I do think they need a goalie, I also don't think they've like played particularly well anyways and i know you said like tons of injuries so but. many injuries jack hughes and fantasy is killing me i've been <laughs> complaining about it forever i hate it he's always injured but i will say something about jack hughes i really like jack hughes in his in his effort era 
with his post game quotes about uh, hasn't that just been his entire career? I don't know. Yeah. But it feels like it seems like it's it's ramped up recently with the post game quotes. Like, yeah, a little bit easier to win when we get saves. Thanks a lot, Lindy. Like, <laughs> not exactly what he said, but that was very similar. What else did he say that was funny? What? Oh, people pay to come yeah, watch was, me play. You said yeah. that something that, in the box. That was that was in the box. They were headed to the box. He was like, people pay to come watch me play, which I like. So I like to see Jack Hughes going. I don't know, a little bit. Crazy. Off the wall. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I don't mind. I've always, yeah, he's great. I just mean, like, I don't know. I just don't think, I, I would guess they're probably not going to make the playoffs this year, which is like pretty so nuts. nuts. I think Stanley Cup picks for some yeah, people. Or at least to make our, the I was, I was arguing them above Dallas for yeah. sure in our thing. Because like, mm, I, yeah. I was trying to argue everybody above Dallas. Yeah, no, you <laughs> did not like Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> You've been yeah. very clear on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how do they not go out and get Markstrom then? Like, wasn't that supposed to happen a few weeks ago? Yeah, who's getting him? Because, like, I mean, I know they might just keep him, but they should get rid of him. Yeah. Well, I get it, though. Like, if they're probably asking for a lot, right? So, I don't mm. know. And then if you're thinking, like, I think, like I said, like, it's, they haven't, Played the best. People are talking about firing Lindy Ruff now. And, like, so then is – do you want to now sell the farm to get a goalie when you're, like, is the team even in the right spot to try But to you know like, they're in the sp- right spot in, like, they have the right core probably. Yeah. like And, and, and Markstrom would be for how much longer? He would, I'll take a look. I like him with years. the internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it would just he's, he's have you a goalie for the next couple yeah. years, not just this year. It, would, it wouldn't be this year in mind, I don't think. Yeah, but he's also got like, he gets paid quite a bit, and yeah. and then they're going to have to start paying people. And then, and then if you've already traded now a bunch of your younger guys when you're a team that's considered to have like one of the best prospect systems, it's just like, I don't know if it feels like the right time to just like throw a goalie. <laughs> they also took a big swing on Timo Meyer last year and gave him a big contract and that just has not worked out at I all. never would have guessed that one. It yeah. did feel like a big swing at the time. That's what it, I was just going like to say. It thing. didn't it feel like, like a big this swing. This is going to put them over the top. Yeah. yeah. He has two years left after this year which I didn't realize. They they gave him money money. Mm-hmm. Um I but that's, that, I don't think that's horrible for Markstrom. Six no, not at all. No. I'm not saying it's yeah. horrible. I just yeah. didn't realize no, they had but, that left. But like, he's also playing well now, but also yeah. like the past two years. That's he true. He's been a little very shaky. good. No. But if you're the New Jersey Devils, like, call it a cup window if you if you want because you have all these good young players. Right now, you're 31st in the NHL in save percentage. You're 26th in goals against. You're in the top half of the league in shots against per game, though, which is like if you want to point fingers to the defense. That's top not half. that bad. G- give me top half. Is that twelfth? Right. It's not horrible. It's not horrible. It's not horrible. What yeah, are yeah. the Leafs? There's yeah. there's two teams in the entire NHL this year that don't have a shutout. Okay. Uh, they the don't Jersey have one. Th- they don't have one. The New Jersey Devils are one of them. The other one is the Anaheim Ducks. <laughs> if you're telling me you're in a cup window with some of the best young talent in the NHL, Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, you make a trade for Timo Meyer, you go out and you get Tyler Toffoli, all this offensive talent. I know they've been, you, you know, they've been hurt with injuries, but I just think this is a year that you can just chalk up as a waste for the Devils because their offensive output, call it maybe they overachieved a little bit last year. I don't really think so. I think the talent's there. It hasn't been going well for them this year, and their goaltending has just hurt them. Well, I know because like most of the articles that still obviously just absolutely love how much they're doing on offense, all of them say the same thing where it's like, Oh, but all their defensive numbers yeah. make it where their first line numbers and just their entire offensive numbers just like go into a hole because they just let goals in. And that's what happens. And it's like hard to just blame the like, defensive effort on that. Right. So anyways, uh, let's move on to the Bruins here who won't be making a move for Markstrom unless they're like, Hey, we don't need three centers. Let's have three <laughs> goalies. <laughs> Uh, but they need to match up with Martin Jones. <laughs> you never know. Ilya yeah. Samsonov, Joseph Wall, and Matt Murray. What? They're going to need two goalies, honestly. What series? Was it the Rangers and Penguins? How many the Penguins went through like three goalies? Was yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it three? Was that the Louis Domingue? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spicy Spicy pork pork. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not the yeah. best. Uh, but anyways, uh, interesting question for them because, again, they're they're doing well at least standings wise but they're an interesting team in the sense that they're still overperforming what people would have thought but the one unique thing about them is they keep blowing third period leads i think the number on that officially is i think they've had uh, oh it's, they've lost nine times in games where they've had the lead in the first two periods which is pretty nuts and pretty damning and also they keep losing in overtime as well how much are you guys going to read into that if you're looking at them as like a playoff match and be like you know what? That proves that in the playoffs they might be pretty beatable, regardless of whatever their record says and whatever their fans are kind of saying as far as 
look, we've already overperformed. You look past us, but like you see that and you might think that's not that tough of an out in the playoffs. What do you think? The overtime one definitely doesn't because I, I think of overtime as a bit of a coin flip. Sure. Mm-hmm. With the th- like the three on three thing. So that like. I would assume, if anything, if they're losing a lot of overtime games, I would think they're going to probably that like even out, if anything. And, and they probably deserve a couple more <laughs> wins there. But I definitely, if, if I'm looking between them and the Panthers, like as, again, from the perspective of, of a fan base that is looking at, like, you're probably going to finish third and you're going to play one of Boston or Florida, like, I'd probably rather play Boston. Which, wow. Give, yeah, give it, are we, are we chanting, we want Boston? Or what? Should, that, want that should be Boston. clipped. Definitely. <laughs> Lee fan asking to play Boston in the first round of the playoffs. Also, he, he, also he, what an electric match. It just, would be yeah. a great match. He also just gives you a favor. I was just wearing the logo. So if no one's familiar with him, they'd be like, oh, I wonder who he cheers for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Julia, do you feel similarly? Or, and I didn't mean to set this up as like, again, looking past the Bruins. Because I still do think like they have done far better this season and they still are a good team. But. How much are you reading into regular season? I know. Isn't this almost exactly what the Leafs have done, though? Like, the Leafs have gone to overtime a whole bunch of times, too. They were blowing, They were going through that era where they were blowing. They were period. winning. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I would, I'm never going to count out the Bruins. I, I don't fully understand still what happened last year in the playoffs. I don't think they do either. I'd be, I'd be really surprised to see them lose in the first round again. Like, they kind of scare me for that reason it's because l- of last year. It's less embarrassing, by the way, I know, because like, they were historically great. But, I mean, like, this Panthers team has clearly proven there was enough there that this is a good team. Yeah. So, at first, it was like, you lost to the like. It eight. looks better in hindsight. It looks far better in yeah. hindsight already. All right. Well, uh, moving on from then. The Leafs, you can discuss your win streak. Go ahead, it's in there if you'd like. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't know. Like, I don't even have much to say no, about that. It's like I think it's just they've they've hit a nice patch. I don't think like they they've de- definitely playing a lot better right now, which no. is nice. When will they erect the statue of Morgan Riley cross checking Ridley Gregg in the face <laughs> outside Scotiabank? <laughs> when will they add it to Legends Row? <laughs> I when mean, they win the cup this year? Yeah, yeah. And well, like, it was so nuts, people being like, oh, like, don't bring him back. Like, I, I know people were joking, but like, they kept saying that after like the after the whole suspension thing. But no, I, I don't know. Like, they're playing well. It's, the whole Timothy Lilligren thing is weird. I don't know if you've been following that as much. I, I, I know. He's been playing so well, and now he's like mysteriously missing from the lineup. And like, some people were like, I saw on Twitter people like speculating trade, which was like, absolutely not. There's no way. But I don't really. <laughs> talking to each other. I don't know. That was the wildest thing of all time. He was like, I felt like I was at Jack Astor's with like a, you know, like it's like a reunion with friends, and he's just like, it's talking to each other, right? Eh? <laughs> We're just not here, right? Eh? Yeah. It, it, it's like, yeah. Well, what do you think about the Leafs uh, seven games? First of all, I think I think it shows growth and maturity of the fan base that you guys are kind of just like, you know what? It's just a good I don't patch know. of the Me season. Me and really never those guys. No, That's please, true. By too. the way, That's like you are the Habs fan in here, and as much as I like to to call out Corwin, especially his optimism all the time, go, go ahead if you disagree with any. No, of what I'm saying. I'll, I'll say this genuinely. In like maybe this is a little far fetched, but in this whole like Matthews era, I can't remember a time where they've looked this good. And part of that is just That's Matthews. That's what he was waiting to snap on. No, no, you know what? Why aren't they talking about how good they look? <laughs> what what, is what that? are we gonna say? They've won however many in a row. Is it seven in a row? Now? Seven. Yeah. yeah. As right. of recording. You, you want me to sit here and say that they, they look terrible? No, they look amazing. Matthews. <laughs> this guy was pissed. He couldn't get in on this. <laughs> no, <laughs> he was like, yeah. I, want I just, I just thought it was funny that like the two Leaf fans kind of were just like like sitting like this. It's like it's like the, the podcast was over. They were just discussing their team. It was nice. I don't know. I'm super intrigued about. I get to go to the game versus Vegas tonight. I'm super intrigued by this game tonight because Vegas is gonna come out pissed. They're back on home ice. Sometimes, when, I don't know, sometimes you hear former players talk about when you get back from a road trip, it feels like, oh, you're home, you could chill out a bit. So I'm interested to see how they how they come out tonight. But obviously it's been an incredible stretch, and I can't wait to see uh, Matt Murray win the game seven in the <laughs> Stanley Cup. I'm obsessed with the idea of Matt yeah. Murray coming back. Uh, <laughs> it was the most out of nowhere I'm comment. Obsessed. To just be like, yeah, he's been he's been seeing some pucks recently. I know for like, sure that Sheldon that? Keefe just wakes up in the morning. He's like, oh, man. I'm going to f*** with them today. Sorry, <laughs> Sam. But he wakes up and he's like, uh, I don't really want to talk to them that much today. I'm going to throw them a bone. Hopefully they leave me alone yeah, for a while. Yeah. And that was the bone. Uh, you're going to go to that Vegas game, but you've also been attending a lot of PWHL games, obviously. Yeah. You've been working a bunch of them. We figured we have to t- chat it that you're here, but let us know. 
who's like just dominating this year? Who's like a player again that like we need to be showing like full on attention to right now? Who's just like killing it in this first inaugural season? Um, okay, I'm gonna shout out three players. Alex wow. Carpenter leads the league in points right now. She's been a weapon. Uh, she plays for the American national team. She's on PWHL New York. Did you guys see those couple? She had one game where she got a jailbreak goal. So goal where her yeah. team was let out of the box, uh, a power play goal. And then she won the game for New York in a shootout with like the filthiest move ever. We put it on bar down. It was, yeah, it was good. Um, she, she's been awesome. So she's been doing a lot of the scoring for New York and she's, I feel like she's sneaky underrated because she's so quiet. She doesn't have that big of a profile, but she's like, maybe the best sniper in women's hockey right now. Hey. My second one is Natalie Spooner, PWHL Toronto. We guys, we all know Natalie Spooner. She's been with the national yeah, team yeah. for such a long been time. Been for a long, yeah. Yeah, but it's almost like she's had this renaissance this year. Like, yeah. Toronto was kind of whatever to start the year. They got shut out by New York in their first game. Carpenter was awesome in that game also. Um, and then she's just exploded. I, I got to talk to her kind of after the game this Friday when they beat New York. And I was like, is the game just coming really easily to you right now? And she said, yeah. Like, she got two goals in the shootout to win the game over New York. And she was, like, looking back at Troy Ryan, like, hey, I'd like to shoot again, please. I think I'm going <laughs> to awesome. score again. Yeah. So she she came back to Worlds this year, and it wasn't her best tournament. She was, like, five months removed from having a baby, which is insane to me. Um, and she just seems that like... That is crazy. I mean, like, that's... Yeah. It's nuts. I was, like... I was the ringside reporter at that tournament, and... I don't know. We couldn't interview her because she had to, like, pump between periods. Like, she yeah. was, she had just had a baby, and she was fully, fully, like, in... On a national mom stage mom. playing yes, yeah, hockey. Yeah. So now she's come all the way back, and she's got the mom strength. Like, she's been the best player for Toronto this year, so... Mom strength is, like, 100%. That's percent my rant. Too. Yeah. No, but... Uh, I feel like the the actual attendance record numbers keep getting most of the attention, but genuinely, because like, you've been to like on any number of games at this point, what's the actual like atmosphere as far as like how much you've enjoyed that? This is sure, like, numbers actually are cool, an awesome question. But yeah, this is always a conversation at PWHL games. The vibe is so good. Yeah. Like, they're very happy. Like yeah. everybody's so happy to be there. There's this. Because there's so many, my favorite people to see at PWHL games sometimes are like women in their 50s who you can tell have loved hockey their entire life, but have never yes. gone to watch women's hockey, who've all obviously loved the national team and stuff like that. So the vibe at games is just really good. Everybody, Everybody's kind of supporting the same thing. There's this aura of, I don't know. Hope almost. It's weird. I don't usually feel that in hockey right now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really nice, nice atmosphere. No. The I was I was at the like the one at Scotiabank. Right yeah, now, and it, that one was amazing. It was yeah, it was like just a packed barn. There were yeah. so many people there. Um, I didn't spend. Thirty-six dollars on a tiny sandwich. <laughs> yes, we, got we don't it. worry. We won't talk about that for another. Or his Caesar, Jesse. We were <laughs> in Blue Mountain Insane. this weekend, and Jesse. It was an expensive Caesar. Imagine what would happen. A very normal size Caesar that he got for after tax it and was tip. I think. Yeah. Do, for, for a drink. One. Yeah. One drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So it that was outrageous. That, that worse than the sandwich. Yeah. yeah. It and was we, outrageous, and then it happened to Jesse. So it was like, oh no. <laughs> and we went to Denny's on the way home, which was a mistake. But the I well, knew it was. Me and Pink no, refused to come to Denny's. What is wrong? It was a mistake. We'll take this Denny's. Slider. But his entire Denny's meal we had just eaten. with drink cost less than the Caesar. <laughs> he said that that was going to happen too. Yeah. My, it was fair. My favorite event story is like, I, I went to, I want to say it was uh, like a Rise Against concert or something like that. And I, it wasn't my scene. My friend took me to it and I went to the back and I don't like really drink there, but I gave the guy a 20 for a Red Bull and I was just waiting for my change and he just gave me the drink and that was it. That was the exchange. And I, I just look, I look back, I snap back. I was like, <laughs> where's my change? And he's like, 20. <laughs> It's twenty dollars for Red Bull. For the Red Bull. It's twenty dollars for Red Bull. That's crazy. That is very tough. Uh, anyways, mailbag. <laughs> I guess. No, we don't have to talk about concessions. Oh, we will. Every single podcast. It will be in the mailbag. Uh, we are in our mailbag. Thomas is learning what that is. Yep. He honestly didn't. Q and A. Mailbag was. It means questions and answers. We put the call out to you guys. Forty minutes ago. <laughs> Maybe we'll do it a little bit more ahead of time uh, or ahead of the show next time. Maybe not, knowing us. Probably not. Probably not. But Corwin's going to rifle through, and we're just going to go through some of our favorite questions. And if we do do this next time, take a look at the Bar Down Instagram page, maybe even just our personal pages, and we'll, we'll set that up so that we can do a nice Q&A. Could be anything. You could ask about hockey. Could be anything, though. 
First one, Connor Nickel Penman. Hey, do you guys just eat Chipotle? You know there's other food, right? That I'm is our just about to go to Chipotle for lunch. I'm uh, waiting so patiently for us to be done so I could rip to Chipotle right now. Guys, that's what really makes us a hockey podcast. Okay? Yeah. It means that we love food Chipotle. Chat. Who, who was the athlete recently that said they spend like $50,000 a year at Chipotle? How is that even was it, possible? Was it Michael? I think it was a Michael it Bridges a on the net said yeah. he eats it every day. Yeah. How is that possible? I think he was yeah. looking for a sponce there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, like, there is, by the way, Los Cabos is a place that's nearby. Just had it. Or ginger? Mexican place. So good. Well, yeah. But I mean, if you sorry, wanted to stay in Mexican, Mexican yeah. They are right. That was our colleague, by the way. Let's go to real first question. He makes fun of us because we, yeah, need to go other places. I think uh, this is a good one. What are your thoughts on the Elias Patterson negotiations? Oh. Mm. Well, so is this just us talking too much and us? I just mean media and fans wanting to know because didn't he at the beginning of the year say, I do not want to talk about this till the end of the year. And now everyone's like, he's not talking about this. He hates them. But yeah. he's like, no, bro, I said this at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So that's I, not a very fun a take. But no, <laughs> but it's like fair. And just to add to that, I would say like almost every single time something like this comes up and like we, we talked about it with Jesse when me and him got a bit of an argument about Nylander and the whole him going to Chicago thing. He could still go. He could go. Chicago. They're targeting him. Yeah. And, but like, <laughs> 99% of the time, they just resign. Yes. Like, he's just going to resign. It's so boring. Yeah. It's n- I hate when that happens. Like, like, not in this particular case. Like, I like if he stays in. They're not going to let him go. Like, are, no. are you kidding? No. Like, you, how do you get that back? How no. do you develop anything like that? How do you get lucky with a pick? They do have here? another Elias Pedersen, Pedersen, however, in their development. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I saw someone tweet out something like that they would be willing to move on Elias Pedersen. And then, like, at the, the bottom, year. they were like, of course they should, you know. They if to get any good piece you'd have to move a top prospect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, keep going. Oh yeah, yeah. Keep going. You More know what's questions. bad is that specific tweet just the way media literacy is now probably caused people to be like, "Oh, Pedersen's yeah. on the move." Also, if it ever did become a real thing that he was available, every single team in the league should of course. be interested in the yeah. last part. Uh, read their names too, by the way. They've been nice enough to That was provide. Tyler Graham 29. Oh, Tyler. Not, not to who be watches mistaken. hockey. No way. Yeah, not to be mistaken with Tyler Graham 28. Yeah. What about 27? Hey, Bessies, what PW, what, what PWHL, oh my God. Top what PWHL sucks. teams do you support? This is an interesting one. I'm an unbiased you... media member, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your hat? You don't wear your hat. Your... <laughs> That's actually true, guys. I don't have a favorite PWHL team. I want to kiss them all. Well, it's kind of, it's it's a new enough league where it's like, I naturally, I'm just going to say Toronto. I don't have one, but it's like if I go to a game, it's going to be in Toronto. So I'd assume that'll just naturally be the first selection. But That's you not- do have a free choice, which is yeah. very rare in sports to get a fresh chance to just cheer for whoever you want. Yeah, I I actually had a tough time with this at the game because I was like, naturally, I would assume I would cheer for Toronto. Yeah, and like, but it's a weird thing because there's so many years of like cheering Canada US yeah. basically was like, like the when most Poulin important Stacey thing. When Poulin on the other team it's like damn what am I going to do boo Poulin. The way know, Ottawa like, did when Ottawa PWHL Ottawa's crowd booed Poulin was I was I mean fired. it's kind of fun. It was yeah, sick, yeah. But I was like oh it feels sacrilegious in some way. I know. But and well and she's so good. Yeah. That, like yeah. just uh, yeah, I don't know. Is I I don't know if I, I I'm 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 going to like say Toronto because I'm just from Toronto and like that makes sense, but your heart I, is I in was, Montreal. <laughs> Just like your spot. Hey, the PW Show Montreal and the Habs just did a skills competition that was sick. together. It was really cool. And that's why my allegiance is. is people were really Montreal. talking about the gun being juiced there, right? Eh? Because Arbor? Like, oh, Arbor hit 107.7 or whatever, and people were mad about it. I don't, do you think that was legit? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You yeah, think yeah. he hits 107? That guy could take your lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mine? No <laughs> he, way. He could take anybody's. <laughs> uh, C. Murphy says Will Boston make a massive trade, including Allmark at the trade deadline? Will they, why would they? They're not. Well, no, that's their tandem. You guys, they will not do that. That's is it plan. almost an embarrassment of riches at some point with Boston? I think like, it's do a you well, need two starters think, when yes. they don't have, like, are, they're not that deep down the middle? I think it's a well executed plan at this point where it's like, as much as I see what you're saying, it's still like that works. Why mess with it? But also, yeah. like, what team is there that could, that you could get? A usable NHL center from right now, and they want the what they want in return is a goalie. Right? Yeah, Maybe a, I'm just being critical because weird... last year in the playoffs they messed up their rotation. They did. Yes. Like, they, well, they didn't they do the plan. They didn't yeah. follow what they'd been doing all season. Not to the same way. I know what he's going to say. But well, I was just going to say, is that also <laughs> just like 
they lost, so we can say that. But like yeah. that, might, that, I don't know if that's the reason they lost. It's not, they it's not got them, but it didn't help, and there was something yeah. they were criticized for. I would say, yeah, which is a lot of talk for a position that doesn't matter at all. Eh? I was going to say, Paul Hollander's asking, have goalies become superfluous in terms of determining a team's success? Paul Holland, can you respond again and let us know what that means? <laughs> 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 I think the answer is yes from 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 you guys, anyways. On that, so I'm yeah. not kidding. What does superfluous mean? <laughs> Here, textbook definition, superfluous. Okay, he's acting like I'm an idiot, and he's. I never acted like now. you were an idiot. Unnecessary, especially through being more than enough. Hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they don't I, matter. Paul, Paul, is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, superfluous. I know what he's saying there. <laughs> <laughs> like Vegas winning the cup last year, Colorado the year before doesn't really help. They both had kind of mucky. I know, guys but now like Aiden Hill's. He's kind of that guy. So. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to start for Team Canada at the Olympics now. Yeah. So I guess. It's either him or Montembeau. So, you know, or Connor pick Ingram. Your, pick your poison. Uh, not to keep hanging on to the Bruins, but this will be the last Bruins. And why are the Bruins the biggest frauds in the show? I'll start by saying wow. they're not yeah. frauds, <laughs> which is that. And that was Sash Aaron's 88. Uh, I did call them frauds, though. Did you? They're not frauds. It's just like, I think They might people, be frauds. Do, do every <laughs> year we do this. It is like an interesting thing that I think people don't really talk about is like, I wonder how much if they don't win like this year and like then it all like lose the, the cup. first round again. Yeah, which win in this scenario? Yeah, win the cup. Okay. So I just think like the closer you get to the end of this era of like guys that they have. Yes. How much do you think they start to look back? Because like they won a cup, and it's more because like I think if you win a cup, you're kind of good. Anything but, else is yeah, but superfluous. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Just keep going. Um, no, I just wonder, like, <laughs> I wonder if Bruins fans will look back on it and, like, kind of think, like, oh, what could have been? It's kind of Should've ironic. Kind of like Celtics fans. They're huh? they're in the exact same oh, yeah, situation Boston. as far they as, They just like, never yeah. win. They, I feel so bad No, for them. I know, but I just mean, like... <laughs> I and, feel so and, bad for them. And it's less <laughs> because in the, in the NBA, the windows aren't quite as long, but, like, same kind of thing for them. Just saying. Uh, Gunter, cool name, uh... Predictions, who gets a third place in the Metro after the Flyers' recent struggles? Or do you guys just believe in the Flyers? I'll put that at the back end of what you're saying. Oh, man, I kind of believe in the Flyers. I believe in in a group of men led by John Tortorella. It just seems like they got something clicking. Has he had the here. biggest like PR turnaround ever in the yeah. last year? Tortorella? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Because now he's like this, this strict but... Sweet uncle, and before it was just like he was in the scary guy group. <laughs> yeah, he really? I thought he was always kind of like this. I don't know. I don't like, know. I, he maybe I opinion. agree, but I it just, does yeah. feel like he's there's there's definitely more love for Torts now. When yeah. it doesn't work for him, and when he has like a superstar player that he obviously doesn't see eye to eye with, like then I think that, his PR. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, then they're like, oh, Tortorella, you know, he's outdated. He doesn't appreciate the new game. All but, those visuals of him like, in PLD in Columbus. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the main guy I was. It's a good yeah. point because like the Flyers, like that's not really a situation that would yeah. pop up. Because they just only really bought in. Yeah, and like the Michigan thing where he was like he could have fun with it and not actually be angry because yeah. they're still doing well. So it was like like okay, I guess again doing well is. Guess, well, they're uh, exceeding expectations. For he's sure. still hard, yeah, on though. The season, on the like, season, remember yeah. the Morgan Frost thing at the beginning of the year? Like, he had him scratch yeah. for a long time, yeah. I think, until he could play the fly away. Yeah. So uh, he's still hard on. Crassin hmm. says, is Matthews automatic MVP if he scores 70? Which is actually a, a good question because I feel... I don't think automatic. No. Yeah. I think Kucherov might win it, honestly. He's got 40 more points than anybody else on his team. Is, is this the quietest 50%. 100 points already in a season? 50% yeah. 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 of his team's goals. Like, he, he has a... a I, I, At least Austin's getting some on. help. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like, but also, seventy goals is just so unprecedented. It's it's crazy. I also think Kucherov as a, as a player as a whole doesn't get as much love. Like if McDavid already had hundred points, we would be not that he's far off, but it would be oh landslide. McDavid has to win. Yeah. Drew Van Housen says favorite breakout players this season. I know we were already talking about Owen Tippett, uh, even though it's kind of like an extended. We didn't this period. episode, but but yeah, Owen, yeah. Owen Tippett. Is correct. Byfield breakout this year? Or was that, that last would count. Year? That would like you know it's extended again where yeah. it started back then, but you could say it was this season. Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> by yeah, by nature of not being in the league, you could still say that. Connor Zari maybe on the Flames. Like I feel like they don't have a lot of uh, okay. stuff to be happy about. And Brock Faber, we right. talked about him a, a bunch. One. I can't believe he hasn't said it yet. He already said it this episode. Who? Uko Pekalukinen? 
No, but he's had a good year. He's been too, good the last sure. week. I wonder if we kind of showed him. Yeah. yeah, Slav is. I don't. I, I guess feel like next year, year when he gets 100 points, that'll be like more of his breakout thing. <laughs> you know? uh, I'm just going to burn through this one very quickly. Kosi16, clarify, saying DZ's team. He's hated on the Sabres for so long and now acts like a closet Sabres fan. I'm not a closet Sabres fan. I have no team. I've made it very clear. He's a Sabres fan. He is a no. Sabres fan. Yeah. Massive. He loves them. <laughs> I, I enjoy them, and I hope you guys win. I said you guys. Uh, when the camera's off, he says we. Oh, yeah, we laugh. We, we got to win. <laughs> we laughed about this one, but would you like to be in the NHL? Yes. yes. I would yeah. love to play in the Sometimes NHL. Sometimes I even <laughs> dream about playing in the OHL. Yeah, OHL would have been, been amazing. That would have been so fun. I was yeah. thinking about this the other day. Just chilling with your friends on the bus all the time. What's the? We started in high school though. <laughs> Sorry, that's school. that sounds awesome for me. <laughs> <laughs> this question is absurd because I don't even understand where it comes from. Uh, Eric BD says, "How likely is it that the Oilers get?" Oh, sorry. I misread the name. It's not even nearly as funny. For some reason, I thought it said Stutzla. It actually says Gunsel. That's totally still fine. Uh, and what would they have to give up? So, yeah. Oilers getting Gunsel. What would they have to get up? That's, yeah, a perfectly valid question still. I, I would, They're going to want a lot for Can him, I probably. do a percentage? Yeah. If you want, I think I'm more interested in, like, what you'd think they'd be asking the Oilers for. Like, Pittsburgh is in such a weird, and I, and I know it's been talked about before, what would Pittsburgh get in that trade that would be, like, this is going to help them That's down, what, down the road. I kind of said this in the last podcast. It's like, they, there's, they're one of the few teams that I've ever thought, like, when you look at this, you're kind of just like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if they lose like, Gensel for free or if they get a, a prospect that, you know, five years from now is going to be like a top six guy, you know, second line player. Cool. Either way, it's like, I would just run the risk of losing Jake Gensel for free and just being like, squeeze Every last ounce out of Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin playing together. Honestly, the thing that I'm really hung up on now, because I'd never really thought about it until last podcast, is we talked about that because it was Yager and Crosby mm -hmm. and we talking. And then so like when Yager left the league, it was like 48 and Crosby's 36 right now. And mm -hmm. I was like, what if he just plays for another 12 years? <laughs> Didn't he say specifically? He was like, I'm not playing until I'm 45. That's what everybody gets hung up on. Because one time, Chris, Sidney Crosby was like, I'm not playing until I'm 45. And, and I feel like it was kind of even a flippant way that he said it. Like he threw that age out there. And now everybody's like, nope. The he number. said he's not yeah, playing yeah. past 45. So he's done at 45. Oh, Hang up the skates. Yeah, that's but I would still take nine that, years from now. Yeah. yeah, that's still nine years. And I would also take that as more of like a Sidney Crosby is always going to say like, Oh, I'm not gonna do some some great thing like in in that way. Like he's not. He's like, oh, well, I'm not gonna play until I'm 45. Yeah. You know? Like I don't know. I just I think he's gonna play 10, 15 more years. Off the back of that, <laughs> Liam. Okay, <laughs> Liam Brady asks, is it the Penguins' best interest though to trade Jake Gunsel? No. I don't know. I don't. No. I do not know what the Penguins are gonna do. I would I, I would try and resign him in the summer and run it back next year. He's trading him from what? that smile. No. no so I what's think that smile about? <laughs> I didn't even know I was smiling. But I don't know. sign him for what though? Like they're gonna be so bad once this era ends. They're gonna be so bad twelve years from now when Crosby retires. <laughs> yeah. What a point. Uh, Travis asks, could all of you win a fight against Rempe from the Rangers? What? First off, I think combined? I could. So I'm gonna combine this with another thing. I don't know if you guys saw that clip of Cam Newton. Like they like jumped oh, at some flat. Yeah, that was he just nuts. Ate a bunch of shots. Just kept yeah. getting punched, and it was just like didn't even react. That's what that. But would I feel look like, like every single bigger. person in this room did that to Rempe. I feel like I feel like Cam Newton's bigger than Rempe. He's like Is six he? five. Oh, and like like I like, feel like we don't, don't we don't like think about like football players Wait, and basketball Rempe's players how six, big seven. they are. Yeah. No way he's that big. Yeah. Welcome. That's the whole thing yeah, about dude, him. like he's massive. I knew he was like a bigger guy in the NHL. I think but you're I right. He, he might just... be like not quite as like big as like a he's football player. Sam like I said big. <laughs> Big, <laughs> but anyways, we would How not. Which means, means he might not yeah. be. A what year? What year was he born in? Um, I, I, see, that's the thing. I, I, I look it. Up. Yeah, he's that, young. Is that he's, factoring into your? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know why. I don't know if we get a punch in. He <laughs> he could hold our head away and then just feed shots. But could he? Oh, take he's twenty. He's twenty one. By the way, he's twenty one. Yeah. Pac is trying to factor in if he has the man strength to take him down. Like, what? I don't know what's going through his head. You lose round one, no punches. Thank you. But I thought all of us were taking him on. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a group thing? Yeah. Uh, like, how many ten year olds could tackle Derek? I Henry? love that question. How many bar how down, many bar -down podcast members? people could fight Rempe and beat him? I think four we could win. Like you take the jersey. Jesse can be like the main. Is it, is it hockey fights? Or can I wear a? Fight? Can we hockey all wear fight. bubbles? We all wearing skates. <laughs> skates and full equipment. 
And so is he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, if someone goes behind a, Jersey over top, more of the I skates, mean, no one would be yeah. able to reach. No, I think like we should want to be on normal ground. Yeah. One guy gets low. <laughs> You're not winning. I don't what know is what that? is it. Yeah, I, I'll, yeah. Like, I don't know. Like trip him. Like I kneel yeah, behind yeah, 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 him and you yeah. push him over. Yeah. Like I feel like Jesse could be like he thinks he's just fighting Jesse, and then we all come in. So you know? we assault him. No, no, we no, no, jump no. him. <laughs> okay, we have to we move have on. Z, please find yes, another yes, question. Yes, yes our I element will. surprise is uh, Arbor Jack guys <laughs> on our side. Okay, we're we're gonna move on. Uh, Stuart, can we just question. add Arbor Jack guy to the mix? Yes, uh, this one it, it's gonna go all all year and all next year afterwards and maybe the year after that. But will Ovi beat Gretzky's record? Are you guys shaking on that enough now? Oh, I'm locked yeah. in. He You're locked will, in still, isn't it? Will happen. He, he's doing it. He'll play he's until still. he like he will sign with. The Coyotes, if need be, to play enough. I don't think. I, honestly, he's he's ripping it up now. He went he through is, that scary is. phase. I think I think it's gonna be. He'll go through. I'm sure a few more dry spells, but he'll keep going. Like if he and needs to play Austin an extra will, year because he's twelve goals away. Like I think, like he'll 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 get him. And then Austin will break it after that. This one goes directly to Corwin uh, Kings uh, Spence. I think uh, Corwin. What is your worst take? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> I know, right? We all have them because when you when you actually have a stamp historically of like I said this, it can age poorly. The Canucks one for sure. Legitimately, at the beginning of the year, I flat out said the Canucks are a terrible team. Did you say terrible? I said terrible wow. team. Yeah, yeah, so I could dumb. not have been more wrong about that one. No, I'm just kidding. We all say really. It wasn't dumb a terrible take at the start of the year, though. They just looked in shambles a bit still. Well, and I don't they know. They always do the thing at the end of the year where they're like, oh, we're going to have this good phase and give you hope the way Ottawa does. Like, yeah. I think the Canucks did that last year and everyone was like, yeah, and everyone well, looked past it. You're right. And, yeah. But that's the other thing is that I think, like, again, when we're factoring in how we kind of predict stuff, is like, it's not like we're a team of people that's going to build models and like base it off of that. It's like even though some of it comes into <laughs> I, I even think, like we're, I thought well you were going to say we're not fortune part. tellers. Yeah. No, 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 but I I more meant that like cuz so much of like my personal feeling comes into it where I kept picking the Canucks to be a good team and right. they kept sucking, so I think I just like soured on it so much and then but like cuz I'd always say oh, I actually like a lot of their players but they suck. Yeah. And then and then I was extremely wrong and they really figured it out and I mean I think even in that prediction I was like yeah I don't know, like, is Rick Tockett the guy? And, like, yes. Rick Tockett's been the guy. Yes, yeah. he is. So, yeah, sure, uh, that's my worst take. F.S. Balm says, what one? what's one thing that you would bring over from European hockey to the NHL? Fun. Ads all over the jerseys. Fan section. <laughs> fan section. Yeah, the fan that, that would be cool. Yeah. The fan section. You, you guys don't want bigger ice? The fan. Uh, I don't mind bigger ice. Yeah. The bigger ice in beer league, for sure. That's Yeah. Better. Yeah. But I like the fan sections. I like the cheering. I like the songs. I like the creativity. I just don't know how much you could get people to buy in on doing that part. But you're right. If they no. could bring it over. If people do it for TFC, you could absolutely get Yeah, but that's like a cultural thing. <laughs> yeah. Like people, those people watch soccer and are like, "What? that's what we have to do here. Like, how do you convince people to do that in a hockey environment? Go ahead while I look for another question. <laughs> well, you just set it up that they just, do it. You have a couple fun chants that are different from yeah. go, insert team name, then go. Oh, it's an old. Oh, it's an old. You can get that no, creative with chance. it. We have yeah, good chance. you can get that creative with it. By the way. Stop it, you, guys. You know I I disagree with this all. Yeah, you don't like soccer. hate soccer. <laughs> soccer yeah. I, the point I was going to make is what you just said is a recipe to get made fun of because the MLS did that. They had these singing like books that they'd give to fans and people still look at that now and be like, look how hilarious this attempt was. I will try and find some of them, but... No, but I don't think you make it... It was so forced. I wouldn't it wouldn't make it as public like that. No, it would be more that you're... You'd like, have to have you're meeting, Yeah, like, you're, no, no you're, you get like some people who are... <laughs> Plants, you say? <laughs> You'd have to have plants. You'd yeah, have, to in, have a yeah. couple people who you put oh, yeah. the crowd. Well, almost like ambassadors that, like, yeah. you're okay, okay, so these yeah. people are there and they're like leading these groups and they're kind of like, you smoke a cigarette at the game. <laughs> with your face. <laughs> like that guy. Yeah, guy? They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, not that. I but. like how you had this, like, I'm like, you need plants, like spies. And you're like, yeah, people who have a job who inspire fun in the crowd. <laughs> like, yeah, that probably <laughs> yeah. makes sense. Well, and they're like super fans of the team, right? Yeah. So like if and then set that up, hey, they get to go to the games all the time. The one thing I always feel bad for people that like run those supporter sections is their backs always to the game. 
They say that all the time. There's like videos that's on them. Like, they just, that's the sacrifice they make is like, I've paid to be here and I don't even get to watch most of this. Mm. I feel like that is way more dramatic than it needs to be. That is the sacrifice I make for my club. <laughs> it is a sacrifice. It's like, you warriors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just turn the around. Trenches. The game's right there. In the trenches. Uh, Hartnett, hello from Queensland, Australia. That's a long way. Josh Hartnett. No, it's spelled differently, I think. You can let me know. Um, primary top three jerseys. Wow, that's a... Ooh, that's I love talking jerseys. Uh, I know what I said about the Sabres part, because I'll bring that in. Current? They're, they're alternates. Like, that's number one for me still. Mm-hmm. Ever. Are, are alternates allowed? Ooh. Oh, yeah, primary. That, I think they're in primary. Oh, I see. Sorry. Let me Let jerseys. me think then. I oh, know. <laughs> they actually do like their primary. And it was in current? Yeah. Yeah, sure, I guess. You can say all time if you want. Let's go current. Current's funner. Okay, current's funner. Uh, that is a tough one just off the top of the dome. I know. I'm trying to use my head. It's like... I do think that... <laughs> <laughs> I do think, and I'll buy you guys some time here, that the Sabres uh, do have, like, the best set, period. Like, just, like, top to bottom. Like, the home one isn't my favorite jersey per se, but it's strong enough that I would probably still put it in the top three. Not in the number one spot. Like... It's just cool. It's like retro. It's a look that works, uh, that doesn't feel dated somehow. So. I'll pick the Habs, and then you guys. pick What are your the Kings primaries teams. right now? Is it not down? not great. Is if I'm being honest, yeah, that, the like, Kings, thing. that home plate looking thing. Yeah. They like their jerseys, by the way. Like Kings fans. Yeah, I like their jerseys them. too. You like the current era of them. Yeah, it's not, not going to be my it. number one, but I I like those still. Not into it. I'm clearly I'm going to have to go to nhluniforms.com. Thank God, see. <laughs> And to end this suffering. Can I drop number in one, an I'm underrated gonna go, team? I'm going to go Arizona, number one. Okay, that's that's a good pick. Like the Kachinas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not a bad pick. I think Philly's New Jersey's, I think they did a good job with them. Ooh. And I think Carolina has nice jerseys. I'm going to say, Kings. because it's primary and it is current, it's a little bit of a cheat here, but the Bruins for their centennial. Yes, I, very nice. I really do like them, yeah. even though they are just a retread of the <laughs> Sabres 50th anniversary. It's literally the exact same jersey. And the font is even the same. Way to go, Adidas. I saw you. I can tell you one that no one's going to say. The Capitals. Like, change your jersey already. I'm going to throw Rangers. out I'm gonna throw my top three. It might be crazy. I don't know. I'm going to go Arizona, Pittsburgh, Ottawa. Ottawa, really? Okay. I love like Ottawa. The 2D. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, it, and I'm, again, if we're not including alternates, it's just the home and away jerseys uh, from this season. That's probably my top three. I, I love all those jerseys. I'm going to go ahead and say Buffalo, Calgary, and the Bruins one. Nice. All right. I'm I'm going to go. <laughs> that was not. <laughs> yeah. That was not. No, actually, I, I, I actually was being honest. Oh, okay. Because Calgary, I was kind of pondering about it. I was like, like is Calgary a weird thing to say? It's kind of classic, but it is a good one. Yeah, when they Hard went back to, to like just the, the C. yellow C. and red. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. All right. Rangers. Nice. R- Arizona. Wait, which one? Like the home. Yeah, the New York. For the Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? That's, and, that's pretty hot take, no? And the, and I don't the think Canadians. that was hot. That was in the top. It's not like a classic jersey. No, it's not that it's not like a classic original six, but I feel like everyone's like, eh, vertical. Like, I feel like you've said that. I like vertical. Dude, the PWHL is the only thing that's shooting vertical in the foot right now because vertical is cool. It just got overdone by that league yeah. right now. Well, and they are <laughs> temporary, those ones. Yeah. Really. yeah. But, but I, funny enough, I was actually mad. That they, I can't find the white ones. They don't sell the white ones. No, they don't sell much of it right now. It's Cause, access. Because uh, I actually do think like eventually it'll be a cool, it'll be a cool collector's item to have one still. You're right. Yeah, yeah, because like if it's gone for even like my PWHPA hat, I'm like this is vintage now. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, which like I, I don't know. I think that'd be cool to have. But yeah, the white ones like uh, they don't sell them at the games. They don't sell them on the website. So now I'm like, can I dig deeper and like contact someone at the team like, I'm sure you can. hey can we get a white jersey to put in our podcast <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then eventually i own it uh, <laughs> very nice we don't send those kinds of emails at all <laughs> <laughs> one time i messaged the zurich lions because this is for a piece like, it's important <laughs> kind of and then i was like yeah do you have any like jerseys from austin matthews year there because i i can't get the current one because it's different sponsors on the jersey do you have any left over from which that is accurate year? yeah and then they were like no 
that's quick. Yeah. yeah they, they, they don't. Good story. They were nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I spend so much time. Do you want in on that one, by the way, Bog? He wasn't talking to you on that one or I really as much, but do you want in on that one? It's okay. Yeah. I was just saying we do send those messages sometimes. <laughs> we do. I just wanted the jersey. We do. Uh, I'm going to go over some non-hockey ones in here real quick to, to end this out. Okay. Uh, Lily Cameron, what did y'all want to be when you were growing up? Aww. Who's going first? What does growing up count as? Because, like, again, if from young enough. I'll let I'm, you define that. How about that? It went, like, NHL, architect, this job. Hmm. If that wow. makes sense. This, this exact job. Yeah, eventually this became the dream job, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say, as a kid, like, I literally wrote it down, and there was the NHL. I wanted to be a goalie. Uh, and then a puppeteer. Wow. Literally, wow. I liked, Whoa. I liked like, acting and things like that. I wanted to be, like, the voice and the, do things. Which That's is kind of sick. Yeah. Kind of do that sometimes. Thumb link. Yeah. yeah. Do we do exactly. <laughs> we still kind of do that. And then, yeah, eventually it was just, like, in working in sports in some way. I don't think I ever would have said this job. Yeah, I yeah, that was true. Possible. I don't even think this job existed. Yeah. yeah. The, what, like, do you have a favorite puppet thing? <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. Uh, <laughs> clearly Kermit. And then, right. it's, then it's Elmo. Those are, like, the icons. <laughs> nice. Those are they the both icons. Muppets? No. Is no. Elmo a Muppet? He's Sesame Street. Is I guess I'm thing? thinking, like, top-down puppet, which is, like, if you want, I don't even know who that is. There's puppets that, like, lamb chops, where it's, like, that's still a puppet, even though it's... Hand um, puppet. It's a hand puppet. Thank you. He knows my craft better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, right. yeah, I mean, you, this is, like, two years ago for you, so... Yeah, I... I <laughs> not really. For, probably from... At about age eight, I probably knew, like, I may not make the NHL. Like, that's when it might have hit me. That's and then really that's self crazy, deprecating. He's actually a good We're, hockey player. And, like, yeah, he I, shows I was, up. Like, I was pretty self aware. No, no, I'm two weeks in a row. I'm, uh, have you? I've been, I, I can't come this Sunday. But, anyways, <laughs> from about age eight, I honestly genuinely wanted to be like a sports broadcaster. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. I used right. to watch, like, James Duffy, Bob McKenzie had like my little book with stats. He used to track. Now he everything. does again. Aww, wow. He yeah. pulled his book. Up. I don't know where my book is. Flashback to that. You did it. Oh, thanks, guys. You made thanks it. for having I me. I mean, kind of made it. Yeah. Welcome to this room. <laughs> Your foot's in the door. <laughs> yeah. Julia. I don't know. I wanted to be like a rock star, NHL player, yeah. and then I was in grade ten careers class, and my mom found the Ryerson program that <laughs> was sports. And I was like, you know what? I'll be Christine Simpson. And then it was just been that since then. <laughs> nice. There you go. I like that. Shout out Christine Simpson. Still trying to be you. <laughs> there we go. And Jules used to post, I remember you used to post you playing guitar on Instagram. Mm. So yeah, if you dig the there, you can song. find it. You guys can still make my dream happen. If you found my SoundCloud. <laughs> Tony Sandsbore. I feel like one thing that gets <laughs> <laughs> on the, on the, to deal. on the topic of that. Cause I feel like we get asked this quite a lot. And I always like using Corwin as an example of that. And Julia, you're in a pretty similar situation. In fact, I think, Pac, you as well. We went to school specifically for broadcasting. Yeah. But I always hate answering, like, how did you get to this point? Because I always think that it's like if someone hears, I have to go to Ryerson or, sorry, TMU or right. a broadcasting program, they always think, like, oh, well, that's it. But Corwin genuinely is an example of the fact that you don't have to do that to, to get to this point, which maybe is a lot more clear now. Because people make videos on their own and yeah. don't need broadcast companies necessarily to support that dream. But, you know, it's your story. Yeah, no, I mean, like like I said, I tried to pursue architecture and I was not good at that. So I stopped. And then... Uh, <laughs> uh, Did well, you love like, this build? more about that. <laughs> I was just like, I thought it was I was good at math and science and stuff. I didn't then, know that. I didn't I know thought, you were a math guy. Yeah. Big and math all, guy. My bo- like, uh, all my childhood books, there's like whenever they say like, what do you like? It's always hockey, math and running. <laughs> and running? Yeah, and running. I love to run. What a unique <laughs> he is great <fat>. thing. <laughs> I don't think those are unique at all. I think those No, might those be are the... unique to like being grouped together. Okay, okay. Those maybe. are not three unique hobbies, but one person doing them I think is. Nice. Thanks. I'll take that. Do you want to see a fun skill he has, by the way, numbers wise, and then get right back to your story? He can okay. look at this set of numbers on the bottom, don't worry. Oh my god, that's so much pressure. Like he can look at any random set of numbers and it just show it to him for what? I'll give you 20 seconds, this whatever. Is not your credit card? No, it's like a <laughs> bus pass. Do you remember the numbers? I'll, are you, are you are you Mike Ross from Suits? No, hardly. But 3303339707. Three, three, nine, that's correct. Wow, yeah. there we go. <laughs> He's literally Mike Ross from Suits. No, that's not that. As hard. proof. And to be fair, it's less don't show the proof. It's less impressive then because they're honestly sets. way more okay, wait, in a, in a, it's like way more fun. Not fun. It's just like really useful because I know all my credit cards, so I never have to have them. I can which that you is usually nuts. don't. I don't know. Probably, which you usually don't, probably. Because 
No, but it's more like like it's great for Daria because like we'll be sitting on the couch and she'll like find something she wants to order online. Nice. Like, what's your credit card? That one's like, tougher. You have ten seconds. <laughs> ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Three one six four five three. One six four four, and we'll ask at the end of the show see if he remembers that. But anyway, that's insane. Sorry, I cut your story off, and you were saying you failed at architecture. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, genuinely, I got. I also got so lucky. Like, if you ever, so I got so lucky. One, Sam is the reason I got into this in the first place because Sam worked at TSN, and I used to booze with him. So, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> crazy. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. Yeah. But like he went to school with a bunch of my best friends. We met a bunch of times, liked each other, had some fun. Uh, eventually, I kept sending him this blog I was writing, uh, which again, but even that, when I was going into architecture, I met this guy, Michael Banana, who's a sports agent uh, in baseball. And we always, we worked at Sport Check together, which he only did like for fun because he was basically, he was going to be a baseball agent for his whole life. And, and the, He's extremely good at baseball. He eventually, we'd do like these little games where we'd name players back and forth. And then I told him I was going into architecture and he was like, what? Why? <laughs> and I was like, oh, damn, I never really thought about something else. Did that. And then uh, basically just, I, I emailed Sam for a bit. Then I interviewed here, emailed our boss, our still current boss, once a month for nine months straight. Eventually they were like, no, it's not going to happen. And I was like, oh, I guess that dream's over. I'd applied to like, every sports station you could possibly think of. I'd done things where like I photoshopped a custom baseball card of myself and that was my resume. I went out and like took pictures with the hats of the logo of the company that I was applying for on the baseball card, put stats on the back that were my like resume and college and all that. Like I'd done so much where I was like, yeah, if I've done all this and I still am not there, like it's just over. Like I just kind of, I honestly had given up on it. And then nine months later, our boss, Dave, just emailed me out of the blue and was like, hey, do you still want a job? I was like, oh, uh, yeah. And then, I don't know, it worked out somehow. The, the moral of the story, I think, there, just persistence and luck. Yeah, like a lot, so of it is, is a lot of it. A lot of it. No, not at all. Like, I'm sure we could cut you memorizing random things. <laughs> I do like the thought, though, that this guy spent that much time on, like, a card resume. Like, what do you, like, what an original idea? And someone went... Anyways, <laughs> and just moved on I with was, their that day. One That's devastated. crazy. Didn't even get a call back. Like, didn't Aww. didn't even get anything. Yeah, it was rough. Do you think they were just like, you try hard. You, you, want, to try, you want to take my job? Because you're going to take it if you come in here, I know. <laughs> I imagine it was someone just kind of like, because I gave it to someone, and then they were just like, okay, cool, and then probably never gave it to anyone else. And then, or it'd be even funnier if he was just grossly underqualified. Like, they're like, wow, this is great. And then they just went... <laughs> These stats suck. You know, when you get a card and it's a bad it was, it was basically the same job as this. So I was like, I was clearly qualified Ooh. in some way. Stats aren't good. Yeah. <laughs> this guy was, what, his OBP's <laughs> under 200? This guy suck. <laughs> oh, anyways. Um, that's it. That's 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 pretty much it for the, the pod. Unless any... Has, oh, usually we do don't think, just tweet. But I feel like that was... That was kind of the mailbag. That, mail that was a mailbag. Which, it's, if you guys didn't similar. know, a mailbag is a question and answer on a podcast. It's also a physical it's a, yeah. bag of mail. Uh, we'll be back, and next week is when's trade deadline? We're, we're getting there. That's next week, right? Friday. Uh, that, March 8th. Yeah, March 8th. Is wow. it literally next Friday? So, yes, we won't have a show next week. Uh, we won't be recording on the Tuesday, putting it out on the Wednesday, which have, you've noticed. That's what we're going to be doing. It's going to be Wednesdays when they come out. That's what we're really aiming for. Uh, but Friday, <laughs> next week. <laughs> <laughs> Live. Nice. Yeah, nice. Live for eight hours, nine hours. Eight Too to long. five. Too long. We'll have some fun ideas, though. Trust me. We'll not just be doing one tier list. We have a bunch of ideas we're coming in with. So uh, chat GPT is gone. We you can be sure as shit I'm bringing a hot potato. I don't know what uh-huh. that is. To- I, so don't you think this is fun? I'm going to get an actual piping hot potato <laughs> yeah. and anybody that wants to talk has to hold it i know I'll can i wear you, mitts so you have to be really sure of what you're saying no can i wear oven mitts do i have to stand in the zeger zone or is there gonna be a chair to be determined <laughs> honestly i hadn't even considered it but now you said it, it's kind of like, funny oh, zeger zone for sure <laughs> uh just before we leave here though officially let's go through some comments from last time out because of course we will read some comments at the end of these podcasts uh, jack rogers 5899 says the reason i love the pod is you think you're getting hot takes about trade deadline and you end up listening to four grown men discuss how much hot dogs cost for way too long 
yeah, that was uh, that was appropriate. Was that an issue? An I was laptop? I was just getting <laughs> to start it up because yeah. like the obviously Jesse can complain about the price of that tiny sandwich if he wants, but my main thing was like. What were you doing buying that sandwich? Like, and, get a hot dog. Yeah. I love and it's the Caesar now. Glizzies. Right? It's the Caesar now, too. You you saw the price when you ordered it. $24 for a drink? I don't know if he did see that. I think I, I think he saw someone else order a Caesar, and then he was like, oh. That's still on you. Look at the menu. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Dex but. Schneider. Uh, you guys should do a revamp of the old jersey quiz since there are way more jerseys. It would be sick. Redoing old quiz ideas, I feel like we've avoided doing, but we probably should do that one because it's kind of a layup. I wonder, do you think we'll ever redo a one to ninety nine and uh, and where we can't say any of the players we said the first time? I don't know. Do you remember That's, all ninety nine uh, players you said? The, Jesse's no, like, you, you can't you repeat that. Watch. He said that to me. He was like, we should do it again. You can't repeat what you said. I'm like, if you remember what you said, that's more impressive than any of that. Do you remember the number? Uh, now I don't remember which one this is, but is it? Three one three four five three one six four four. He got everything but one number right. Oh. He he mixed he mixed the two. There was the begin. You had the beginning of one and the other one. But anyways, uh, goodbye. Top. <laughs>